Here, and welcome back to another episode of How to Animate a Gacha Scene Live 2D Tutorial Series, where I show you my process on rigging models and making animations. In this episode, we'll continue from where we've left off from the second up and focus on the body angles and the implementation of physics for your model. This is the third episode of the entire series and also the final part of the rigging phase. If you hadn't watched the last two episodes, I recommend checking out those videos before moving on to avoid confusion, unless if you're familiar enough with the program and its tools. As always, the link to the playlist is in the description below, as well as the eye icon on the top right of this video. Now with that out of the way, let's get over with this process. Here we are again in Live 2D. Let the suffering begin! Right, so let's set up the deformers for each element. Select each part of the torso and make individual deformers, from the torso itself to the clothes and accessories, for more flexibility. Right after that, going to the deformer palette, hold down control or command, and select the deformers we just made. Then create a warp deformer for all of those. This will be the main deformer for the body. Okay, so we'll be doing the main movements first. Taking the reference that you have, if you have one, select the main deformer of the body, add three keyforms to the body X parameter, then just follow along the position of the reference. Remember to use the Reflect Motion if you need to by going to the Palette menu in the Parameter Palette and selecting the Reflect Motion option. Okay, cool. Now this time, take the individual deformers we've made for each part, then try to align them to the reference. Now just repeat the process for the rest of the individual parts of the torso. Moving on to the Y movement, we're gonna take the whole deformer of the torso, which should be the same deformer we use for the positioning of the X angle, then on the parameter palette, click on the body Y parameter, and then add three keyforms. Slide the red dot to each side and make adjustments from there. With that done, make sure to synthesize the corners for both the body X and body Y parameters. Go to the palette menu on the parameter palette, then select Synthesize Corners. Make sure that both of those parameters are selected in the drop-down arrows, then click OK. Now the general movement of the body Y angle should be there, but maybe some of the parts don't really look right. So you might need to make adjustments for the parts individually. Do so by selecting the warp deformer of each part, Add three keyforms to the body Y parameter, then adjust from there until it looks about right. Don't forget to synthesize the corners. Then just repeat for the other parts. Alrighty, the torso is now done! But you can see that the head isn't really following along. Kind of like how your crush doesn't follow along with your feelings, so just like in real life, you gotta put a little more effort to impress them or get their attention. I'm sorry, what were we talking about? Oh. Oh, right, positioning. Got it. So, what you're gonna do is that you're gonna switch from the part palette to the deformer palette, 
Take the rotation deformer of the head, then add a warp deformer. This will be used for the positioning of the left and right movement of the head whenever the body X is in motion. After that, key the deformer to the body X parameter, then start adjusting. For the motion of the body Y, you're gonna take the rotation deformer instead, then key that to the body Y parameter, then start adjusting the position from there. Changing the size of the head can achieve a more realistic effect. For example, the head will be a little bigger when the character is leaning forward, and smaller when the character is leaning back. Now do the same thing for the arms. Select their parent deformers by holding down Ctrl or Command, then key those to both the body X and Y parameters. Adjust their respective positions and don't forget to synthesize the corners. Now, normally I'd say we should do the same thing for the legs, which we will, but... Okay, I gotta admit, there was a little bit of a misstep in the last episode, whereas we rigged the legs without the X angles for those. But don't worry, we won't go back from scratch again, we just have to add the X movement. So if y'all could just, you know, delete the duplicate leg first. Look, I'm sorry, okay, that was a big oversight on my part and the mistake was totally on me. Peace be with you. <clears throat> Moving on. These are separated into parts, the thigh, the foot, and the shoe, with some of the shoe components separated as well, from the outline to the base and the minor details. Of course, this can vary and would usually depend on the model. Go ahead and make warp deformers for each part, similarly to what we did with the torso. Now that that's done, we're going to start rigging. I usually make another parameter solely for the X movement of the leg for more flexibility in the animation process. So, in the parameter palette, we're gonna create a parameter by clicking on the plus button on the lower right corner. Name it and change the values to negative 10, 0, and 10. This is usually the default range of the body input. Using the deformers we created and the parameter we just made, you should know the drill by now, considering that you've watched part 1 and part 2 of the series. But if not, select the deformer we want to adjust, add 3 keyforms on the parameter for that movement, slide the red dot to each side, and start adjusting. If you have a reference to follow, use that, but if you don't, then you can just estimate it or eyeball it until the part looks about right. Okay, before we duplicate the legs, we're gonna position it first and make sure it's aligned with the torso whenever it's turning left or right. So, take the parent deformer, which should be the parent deformer of the whole leg, then add three keyforms for the body X parameter. Then make adjustments from there. Once you're done, we're just gonna duplicate and change the parameters to its opposite side. Copy and paste the folder of the leg parts. Then, right-click and select Reflect. Make sure to check the Reflect Horizontally box. And this time, make sure that the body X parameters for both the torso and the leg itself are selected. Then click OK. Once you've done that, it'll automatically be reflected. Though you still have to change the parameters. Select the parameters one by one, hover over the drop down arrow of each parameter, then click Change, choose the parameter you want the movements to be keyed in, and click OK. Then repeat the same process. Okay, last one! We're going to add the body Z rotation. In the deformers palette, 
Hold down Control or Command, then select the deformers of the whole torso, the shoulders, and the head. Then create a rotation deformer. Hold down Control or Command, then click and drag the deformer to the position where you want it to be. Once that's done, add three keyforms to the body Z parameter, then adjust from there. Your whole model, at least for the most part, is fully rigged. It's up to you if you want to add more details like accessories, face shadows, expressions, and more. The process for those are fairly similar from the ones we've discussed prior. However, do let me know if I should make a separate video on how to rig certain parts of a model, and I'll see if I can do that sometime in the future. Now, this is optional, but I tend to add physics for my models to make the animation process easier on my end, mainly for the hair. To set it up, you want to go to Modeling, then click on Physics Settings. Now you can see this window. I know it looks a little intimidating, but I'm gonna try my best to put it in simple terms. When you click and drag your cursor around, you can see that the model automatically follows along. However, there may be certain parts you want to add to the tracking. If you want to add more parameters, all you gotta do is go to Preview, then select Settings of the Cursor Tracking. Now you can see the array of parameters you've set for your model. Find the parameters you want to be tracked, then go over to the column type, then select how you want it to be tracked. Okay, now let's set up the group for the physics. First, on the physics tab, you want to click on add. Name it as the movement you want to add, then in the input preset, since we're doing the hair, select the head input. As for the physics model preset, I'll be selecting the hair with a double pendulum because in this model, we have two main movements for the hair. Now if you click and drag the cursor over your model, you can see the pendulum moving. This is going to be the motion of the physics when applied. You can also see that the parameters for the input had been set. Now we're going to set up the output of the hair movement. Switch from the input settings to the output settings, then you want to click on add. Then select all the hair parameters the model has by checking each parameter or just by checking the folder. Now when you move the cursor over the model this time... <gasps> look! The hair follows along! But it still needs touching up. If you double check the output settings, you can see that every parameter has a pendulum number. This refers to the end point of each pendulum. To achieve that natural swaying motion, the main movements of the hair will have the pendulum number of 1. While for the swaying motions, the pendulum number will be 2. See? It's all coming together! However, you might think that the current motions are a little too much, or maybe not even enough for you. Right here, you can see four columns. Duration, shaking influence, reaction time, and overall acceleration. Here's a quick rundown for each one. Duration refers to the length of the pendulum and how long the part will take to follow the form. Shaking influence, from the word itself, refers to the intensity of the shake of the part. If it's set to around 1, the shaking will be very, very prominent. Whereas if it's lower than that, it will shake less or won't even shake at all. Reaction time refers to how the object will react. The lower the number, the slower the reaction time. And the higher the number, the quicker it will follow through. And overall acceleration, which is self-explanatory, refers to the overall movement of the pendulum. The settings for these will likely depend on how you want the physics of your model to move. So go ahead and do some experimenting and see what settings you like best. And that's it for the whole rigging process! You're officially done with rigging your character! Big props to you for having the patience and determination to finish this part of the series. The next segment of this will be about animating the character and their movements, which you'll eventually see sometime in the future. Who knows when though? <laughs> anyway, thank you for watching this tutorial series and I'll see you guys in the next video! Stay amazing and God bless! Siege out! Woo!